Good Tuesday morning. Today, I thought I would talk to you about humor and social media. Now, the reason I bring up those two combined is because I found that humor sometimes does not translate 100% on social media. And what I mean is, to put it bluntly, you always got one moron out there who just doesn't get the joke, okay? And they always think you're serious. Now, ooh, thunder. I guess we're going to have rain today. There's more thunder. Florida, that's the lovely thing about Florida. One day it's sunny, next day it's going to rain. And I have a cat down here. What do you want, cat? Get out of here. But back to humor and social media. Yesterday on Facebook, I came up with an original joke. And I put it into a little story. uh, Maybe about a paragraph long. And I actually had somebody direct message me and ask me if I was still, how, how much it cost me to get out of jail. Now, you're probably going, what? Okay, Here, here's the situation. I'm going to tell you this joke. Now, bear in mind, this is an original joke. This is my own concoction, okay? And I thought it was pretty funny. But then again, I think I'm funny. But then again, I guess I'm really not. I guess it's how you all take it. But here's the joke. I went to my local post office yesterday and I went there to mail some letters. So I had the envelopes up on the counter. Next thing you know, the cops are there and I'm getting arrested. I spent eight hours at the county jail getting out. I was arrested for pushing the envelope. Okay, now that was the joke. Now, did you get it? Did you not? I don't know. I don't think it's that hard of a joke to figure out. I really don't. It's pretty damn obvious what the joke is. And I hate the fact that I have to explain jokes to people. I just don't know if these people just don't have any common sense, if they don't have any humor if they just can't figure things out or if they just take everything 100% literally the way they read it. Now, granted, it might translate differently with me telling it to you and you seeing my face. Boy, the thunder is getting loud over there. It's coming from that direction over there. I can see the clouds rolling in. It was just like this yesterday. I made the video yesterday and it was beautiful out. By that afternoon, we had torrential downpours. That's Florida. As I was saying, I don't know if the joke translates easier because I'm sitting here telling you and you see my face, the reaction, versus reading it and you don't really understand what they're trying to get at. But I actually had somebody, (laughs) somebody who actually direct messaged me and asked me how much it costs to get out of jail. I had to explain to them the whole setup of the joke. See, I was at a post office. I had letters that come in envelopes. I got arrested for pushing the envelope. It's a play on the the phrase, pushing the envelope. Or envelope, excuse me, envelope. What the fuck's an envelope? I guess that's one after you open it is. No, that'd be an open loop. An open loop? An envelope? See, this is why I don't do hardcore drugs, because (laughs) I can barely speak without them. But I just, I don't understand how people can't understand jokes. What is the problem? Why can't you understand a humor, a bit of humor? It's like, um, every now and then I'll be in these, these uh, live shows that people have going in, and there's a, there's a wonderful guy out there by the name of the Great Dirtbag, who used to be called, um, of all things, he used to be called the Great Douchebag before. I don't know why he changed it before, but it was funny. He comes up with some really good ones. And I've watched the people respond to his jokes, and they're like, what? What? I mean, you know, oh, God, I can't think of one of his right now offhand. Um, But, I mean, I I throw them back and forth with him all the time. And I get people who don't understand him either, like uh, AOC. They're they're political jokes. AOC was 
was uh, asked if she was involved in money laundering, and she said, no, there's no way I'm involved in money laundering. I don't even do my own laundry. Um, AOC was asked which party she best associates herself with. She said birthday. Um, AOC says that... Uh, oh, I forgot how it went well. But you, you get the gist of it. They're jokes. They're humor. What is there to understand? If you don't get it, don't say anything. Oh, it's simple as that. I, I just don't understand how come social media and some people on social media just don't get humor when it's presented to them. Now, back when we lived in Illinois, we used, I used to have a little thing that I would, if somebody in the household didn't get a joke, I would pretend to roll out a chalkboard and go, okay, look, the joke is here. It goes down to here, comes over here. They're like a schematic for the joke. And... Uh, but it just cracks me up. And I've had this happen to me many times in the past. There's another joke that I told on Facebook. Excuse me, spiderweb. Um, and it, this, is, of course, is in type form. And the joke went, so, went like this. Um, I feel really bad about myself because I, I cheated on my wife. And I don't know how I'm going to get over it. I figured the best thing to do was to tell her. So I told her that I cheated on her. And I also asked her, the next time we play gin rummy, don't walk away from the table with your cards unattended. Okay. I actually had somebody direct message me over that one. Oh my God, are you guys getting divorced? <laughs> yes, we're getting divorced over gin rummy. Neither one of us play gin rummy. That's the thing, I just don't get why the... Ugh. Can people not understand humor? I've watched people, I used to, Kitty, stop that. I got a cat down here clawing at the scratching, at the uh, post the phone's resting on right now. But I've had, um, I used to hang out with uh, a lot of comics in the early 90s. Uh, club comics in Chicago. Harry Hickstein, uh, Ricky White, uh, uh, people of that nature. You're probably going, who? Well... Harry Hickstein was the guy who uh, came up with the screenplay for uh, Meet the Parents. And uh, it was financed, the, the uh, independent version of it was film financed in Chicago by Emo Phillips, if you know who Emo Phillips is. Uh, Ricky White is another great c club comic out of Chicago. Uh, he's a black dude who dresses all in white. I mean, everything's in white. His glasses, his suit, his shirt, his shoes, everything. It's, it's kind of funny. Another guy I used to hang out with is Orlando Blue. Orlando Blue is one of the dirtiest comics you've ever wanted to hear. But God, is he funny. Um, <laughs> but they used to always tell me that humor is is really on the, a different level of with everybody that you talk to. And he said he's had people, or my friend Harry Hickstein, has actually told me that he's had people come to him after a show, and he said they're sitting in the front row, and they're laughing, they're laughing, laughing the whole show, giggling, giggling, having a great time, ha, ha, ha. And he said they'll come to me after the show, and I'll be sitting there having a beer or something, and they'll look at me and go, you know what, um, you know that joke you told about this or that? I didn't really get it. And he'd say, well, then why were you laughing? Oh, I didn't want to be offensive to you. <laughs> How do you laugh at something you don't get? That's the other thing I don't understand. It's like I did stand-up for um, about two years uh, in some little bars up in Wisconsin and stuff. Not, nothing major. Um, <laughs> and one of the jokes I told one time was... Uh, um, uh, how did it go? Oh, um... I didn't really understand the full term of the word double wide until I moved down south and met one girl down there. Okay, big butt, double wide. Okay, that one somebody asked me to explain to them also. Well, what did you mean by that? That's what really ticks me off the most is the people who are just absolutely so damn stupid that they, you have to sit them down and explain the joke to them. Here's what happened. This is why you say this. This goes with this. It's like putting together a puzzle that's marked for ages 1 to 5 with a 35-year-old. Explain, okay, that one with the square piece, that's a corner. That goes here. Okay. Now, see this one here? This one goes next to this one. You know, 
I, I don't understand why it's so hard for people not to get jokes on social media. I've seen a few people out here on Facebook where they're, the joke material that they put out is like, it's like watching Hillary Clinton try to make jokes about Donald Trump. It just isn't funny. It just isn't funny. And you don't understand it. But that was my uh, my little uh, fun yesterday. Um, I had to explain to the person who direct messaged me that I was not in jail. It was a joke. I didn't even go to the post office yesterday. And she wrote back, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> With like three explanation points. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for what? I didn't go to jail. I didn't even go to the post office, you nitwit. What are you... <laughs> oh, my God. I guess it's... I guess humor is translated easier when you're looking at the person, when you're seeing them directly so you can get the... Uh, I mean, I used to... My friend Harry Hickstein, the comic, used to always tell me, he'd say, you have to use facial expressions for some people. And what he used to do is only... Because when you're on stage, you can only see, like, the first two rows. Everything else is in black. It's just like an abyss of humor that you, or laughter you come, hear coming from you. And... Uh, he said, you have to just use facial expressions to the people in the front row that you know aren't getting it. But they're going, ah, ah, yeah. And he said, you just look at them and go, you get what I mean? <laughs> and then they feel stupid. It's, you, you, it's basically call, calling, calling them out on their own stupidity. But it's ridiculous. But I guess that's just the way it is. I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. <laughs> some people do, some people don't. Plus, I have a very strange sense of humor. I have a very dark sense of humor. I find humor in everything. Absolutely everything. One of the, I'll finish off with a, a really funny story. This is a true, honest to God, true life situation that did happen to me. Um, I was married to a woman uh, by the name of Linda. She was in my video last yesterday. I was married to her, and she was, uh, this is the night that she passed away. I know, humor and somebody dying? Hang on. She... <laughs> <laughs> she had, had always wanted me to donate her body to some sort of medical research facility when she passed away. I said, okay, I'll do this for you. So she passes away. I go home. Um, I, I come back November 1st to the hospital to meet with this donation center uh, representative. And I walk in. I'm riding my motorcycle. I'm dressed head to toe in leather, you know, looking pretty badass, feeling like shit, you know. And the guy says to me, you know, thank you for your donation. It's, this is going to help out a great deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. And uh, he says, we have one uh, question for you. Would you like to view the body one last time? And I thought, you know, yeah, yeah, I do. So I, they, they prep her up in this little room. And, you know, naturally when somebody's dead, they, they don't look the same, you know. So I stayed in there for a couple minutes, said my piece to her. And... <laughs> I come out and the guy, you know, now this man's used to dealing with people at their absolute worst. I mean, they're just down. They're out for the count. And he says to me, have all your questions been answered? When I turned around, I looked at him and I said, yeah, yeah. I said, one big one was really troubling me. And I said, if, you know, he goes, may I ask what it was? I said, sure, sure. I said, you know, when you're looking at a dead person laying there, I said, you can't tell them a knock-knock joke to save your life. And the guy did not know what to do. He had not a clue what to do. He couldn't even talk. He just sat there, his mouth dropped, and he went, uh, okay, um, uh, I finally, I spoke up, I said, relax buddy okay and I said this is just a coping coping mechanism for myself um, you know I uh, this is what I have to do to make myself get through this without crying like a you know a two-year-old sitting here right now you know 40 some years old and crying like a baby and uh, when it was all said I signed all the paperwork he looked at me he says you know what he said you're probably one of the most interesting guys I've dealt with in these situations. And I said, well, that's just the way I am. But that's my little rant about humor 
and social media, how the two just are mutually exclusive from each other because there's always some idiot in the crowd who takes everything you say 100% literally the way it is. And it, it's ridiculous. So remember, folks, if you don't get a joke, just don't say anything or have your five-year-old or seven-year-old explain it to you or have somebody who you trust explain it to you. But other than that, that was loud. Other than that, I am out of here. It's way longer than I anticipated. I did not anticipate this going for 15 and a half minutes, but I did because most people aren't going to watch the whole thing. So that's why I try to keep them under 10, and I've been really doing really poorly at that lately with these last two videos. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. And what the fuck is this bouncing shit? I don't even know why I did that, but I did it. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I will see you on the next video. Please, PayPal information is in the link if you care to make a donation. I still need a tripod so I can stop coming out here using this damn fence post. <laughs> and they're only the only one I want is only $10. So, But thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye.